libraries as GED testing centers. Uh, my name is Nicole Wolf, and I'm the branch manager of library development here at the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives. And we're very excited that you're here today, and thank you for joining us this morning. Um, and we're also very excited to have our presenters here with us today. We have three presenters today. We have Mark Adler, the director of the Paris Bourbon County Public Library. Ashley Wagers, who is the director of the Jackson County Public Library, and then Natalie Cummins, who is the GED administrator for the state of Kentucky. If you have any questions today, Lauren Abner and I are going to be monitoring the chat box, so please feel free to type in your questions as we go along. And as each presenter concludes, we will take time to, um, to try to answer your questions. Um, the slides will be available um, at the end of the webinar. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And Mark is going to kick us off. Um, so go ahead, Mark, and I'll queue up your slides. And just double checking the unmute feature worked. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, awesome, awesome. Um, well, good morning, everybody. Um, hope everybody's doing well during these troubling times. Um, I'm here to obviously talk about what we did in terms of getting a GED center set up in our library. And um, a little story about it. Back before we started our construction project in 2014, we had been speaking with our local um, adult education center office. and had identified that there was a real need for a test center because we were moving out of our facility to have it be renovated. And we're going to be in a space that didn't allow us to have a test center. Um, everything got put on hold for about two years, unfortunately. But when we came back after reopening, um, one of our first goals was to get our GED test center um, open. And we did so fairly rapidly. And I have been excited and happy about that ever since. It really kind of met one of the big needs in our community because we have a lot of people who don't have access to good transportation. And at the time, the nearest center was in Lexington. And for them, getting to Lexington was a real hardship. So um, next slide, if you will. Yes, I can do that. Actually, I see I can do that. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, fine. So you know, I, I, some people might ask, well, why go through the effort? And I, I think that there's a lot of reasons. And you know, from a self-serving standpoint, of course, you can do it and look really good for your community. You know, this is one more thing that the library is doing. Um, I think that's kind of the least reason to do it. I think one of the more important reasons to do it is, of course, that a lot of people really need this service. And I don't think it really matters what county you're in. I think the number of people who don't have at least a high school equivalency degree is relatively high. And it creates some real job-seeking impediments for them. Um, they may find that they've kind of plateaued in their ability to move up. Um, so you know, we wanted to become what we considered to be an active part of the solution for our county. Um, we wanted to help people find jobs and to really increase their, um, their employability. So that, that was a big thing for us. And we really found it was a powerful statement about our library as well. Um, you know, libraries are about education and about literacy. And, and for us to step outside the foot traffic that we see, that you know, so much of which is just to check out the five movies that they can get that day and then go home, and to provide a different type of service really felt good for us. Um, when you go down this road, though, you're going to really have to consider some things, how you're going to staff your center what your space limitations might be, um, and you know, quite a few other things. And I would argue right now, even though libraries are just kind of reopening, a pandemic is kind of the right time to be doing this with all of the job loss that we've been seeing in our county. And I know other counties have experienced. People are really hungry for employment. And you know, getting their GED may actually help them get a job or even a better job than they had before they may have lost their job. So creating a center was, was fairly simple, actually. Um, it did take some time and some planning. Um, it took us about three months. Um, 
part of it was because I was really tied up with reopening the building after our construction project, but part of it was really trying to get everything in order. Uh, Pearson View was easy to work with, I would say. I did not work with Natalie at the time, but I think Natalie would be a wonderful resource right now to help help you if you go down this road. One of the things Pearson View will ask you to do very early on when you contact them is they need a definition of your space. Um, they need to see lots and lots and lots of pictures of what your space is going to look like. And they need detailed explanations because they need to make sure that anybody coming into your center isn't going to be doing nefarious things like you know, cheating or copying exam questions to share or sell on the Internet. So they need to make sure that everything is going to be in place and as it should be. We did not have an on-site visit, visit from Pearson View, and I don't know if they do that. Everything we did was via email and over the phone. Of course, you're going to need test administrators. Um, if you're going to be one of them, you'll have to pass that test yourself, of course, and it is a test that you take. Um, it's not a difficult test, but it is pretty in-depth, and I would recommend you study for it and kind of get a feel for, for the types of questions that they would ask you or that you might be asked even when you really are. And I would also encourage people to start small or as small as you think you can, gauge your need, and expand as practical. So some of the pictures that they had us send, they wanted an exterior photo of our building. Um, they wanted lots of interior photos showing the testing computers and their proximity to each other. They also wanted to see where the test administrator's computer would be. Um, so you can see some of the kind of shown in, in these pictures. They wanted to see your parking lot situation to make sure that anybody who was coming to take a test had parking available. If you're on a line for public transit, they want to know all of that information. Um, they want to see where your check-in for test takers is going to be, and that's the top right photo. This was before we got our old circulation desk back, but test takers would come to that desk and you actually take a photo of them and, and whatnot. Bottom left, they want to see kind of where people who are waiting to take a test can sit and wait. They want to make sure that you've got comfortable seating that's going to be pleasant and not you know, overwhelming for them so that they can relax. And in the bottom right, you have to provide lockers for all of your test takers. You can see you don't have to do anything really extravagant. Our lockers are quite portable. Um, and in fact, I'll say our whole test center is something that we tear down after each use so that we can repurpose that space but we do have locking um, lockers that we make available to all of our test takers. Test delivery computers, they really don't need high-tech specs on them. We had actually pulled some computers from our normal, um, normal use with our public. Now they're about seven or eight years old and they still do a fine job delivering the test. So you don't need anything that's really high-tech in, in terms of its specifications, but they do have to be configured very, very specifically. The only thing we use these computers for is testing, and it just keeps things a lot simpler to, to do it that way. You do need a white background to take candidate photos. Um, we went really cheap, and we just got some white poster board and put it on an easel. It works well enough. Um, you have to make sure that you don't have a lot of color differentiation or anything that bleeds through or around the photo, because they need to make sure that that white photo is, is completely surrounding your test taker. And I'll say that we were approved on August 11th of 2016, and we've been operating ever since, except for our closure during the pandemic. Um, we will be opening next Tuesday, and we've already got a full slate of candidates signed up. So I know people have been waiting, and I've been hearing that behind the scenes. Um, a test center can really look, I mean, once you follow their guidelines, it can look pretty much however you want. Um, for us, it was we knew we were going to be space limited even though we had a new building. We couldn't dedicate a room just for taking tests, and we didn't want to have a space like a computer lab that we would shut down during certain periods and then make inaccessible to our patrons. So what we did was we used one of our study rooms. Um, we knew we didn't want to have more than four tests at any given time, and that room was big enough. In the morning before the tests, we set the computers up. It takes about 10 minutes. In the afternoon after the testing period's over, we take them down and it takes about 10 minutes. So it's, it's a little sunk staff time, but it frees up a lot of space during periods that the center's not open.
Um, the pandemic has shattered all of us, not just our plans. I think it's shattered all of us psychologically, too. Um, we got calls from patrons who were wanting to take tests, desperate to take tests, wondering where they could take them. Um, at one point, I was able to direct somebody to a center in Frankfurt that had been open, but most centers kind of closed, and people are lining up, and they're really eager to get back in. Um, as I mentioned, next Tuesday on the 7th, we're reopening. We're excited about that. We're actually opening in a new space in the library, the place that we had been using. Um, we've had to commandeer for something else during um, the ongoing pandemic. So we've taken our um, children's activity space, um, kind of programming room, and we've turned that into our testing center for now. It did not take three months to get that switch taken care of. We did it in about a day, fortunately. Um, the person from Pearson View I work with said it was the easiest switchover she's ever had. I think a lot of it was our prior experience. We needed to take lots of photos and to provide a lot of, um, a lot of verbal description about each photo and what it represented so that when, when I submitted that to her, she was able to go ahead and improve our space very quickly. And um, we do anticipate a lot of need and that we're going to be busy, and we've already seen that the, the tests are filling up. So this is kind of the new space. Um, you can see the entryway, the lockers have been moved. We'll still be using, in fact, you can see the our old circulation desk from 1904, um, which serves as the um, registration desk. You can see our um, our white poster board there that we use to take a photo in front of. And then for the two pictures, you can see the interior of the activity space. The computers are just set up on tables, and it's pretty stark, and that's kind of the way that they want it. They don't want anything on the walls, and in fact, in the in the background, you can see below the window um, on the top right picture some things hanging and things on the ledges in various locations. They want all of that removed. They want your room to be as empty as possible. And then they like a photo showing your library with the name on it. So again, anybody who's coming to take a test can actually find your space. Some random thoughts that I had, and I spoke with our with our test. Um, administrators, and we actually have eight of them right now. We have a staff total, including me, of 21 here at the library, and eight of us are test administrators. We're not using volunteers. We're actually using staff members. Um, if you're going to use staff and not volunteers, make sure you plan for sickness and vacation time. You've got to maintain redundancy. The, wor the last thing you want to do is cancel a test because you don't have somebody on staff at a given time. Um, that's just not a good, not a good plan. If you plan to use volunteers, you're going to have to make sure you have trustworthy ones, and it's kind of for the same reason. Um, volunteers are less beholden to schedules, it seems, and if somebody's sick and you don't have somebody to fill in for them, it's, it's going to be an unpleasant experience for one of your test takers. We have tested hundreds of candidates um, in the past almost four years now, and I have to say um, we've been really proud of what we do here. I mentioned that noise and distractions can be an issue for candidates, and without pointing to other test centers, um, candidates who have tested in other centers have commented that ours is the quietest one that they have been in, and they've been really appreciative of that. Um, so you know, to me, it's, it's really important that you provide a nice, quiet space for them. Update your computers regularly and well before you need to test. Um, we have scrambled and fortunately gotten our computers running at the very last minute, but lo and behold, we'll turn them on in the morning, and Microsoft wants to install a 400,000 gigabyte patch, <laughs> and it is not always a pleasant thing. So you know, make sure that you're keeping your computers regularly updated and do it long before you actually need to use them for testing. And also, don't be afraid to call the Pearson View help numbers. We have found them to be extremely easy to work with very knowledgeable and they can work you through any any situation or any questions that, that you might have. I will say you rarely hear whether a candidate passes, but when you do, it's really a sweetness that you can savor. Um, the very first person who took a test with us, um, he was about 18 or 19 years old and he was so sweet. He was so nervous when he came in. It was the very last test he had to take. And when he was done, he ran over to the Adult Ed Center, and he came running back and said, I passed, I passed, and he was jumping up and down. <laughs> and it was, it was one, of the, one of the really fulfilling moments um, for us at that time. 
I'll say that our staff are all really trained, and I think it's important that we need to be patient and ultra kind to candidates. Obviously, we can't give them clues or hints about the test, but recognize that when they come in, they're really, really nervous. And you know, I've seen them just shaking before. Talk to them, treat them as human beings, ask them how they're doing, and just and remind them to say, you know, if if for some reason it doesn't go the way you want today, you can always come and take it again, and you know, get them laughing and talking. And we have found that that usually has has helped our our candidates immeasurably. Logistically, we're open one day a week from 10 to 5. Um, it's during the week and not on the weekend. Saturday hours would be nice um, because of our staffing situation, though we've not really been able to offer those yet as they begin. Make friends with your local SkillsU team. They used to be your adult ed center. It's now SkillsU. Um, they are a wonderful group of people. Um, our local group here in Bourbon County are so supportive of their, of their candidates and I think you'd probably find that in any county you're in. Have a sense of humor about things. Um, there are constant issues. You know, the network may have a glitch and it drops them out of a test, or something else happens, and you know, they are so nervous. You've just got to have a sense of humor and get them to relax. Paul Pearson, you. We've never had something that didn't work out and work out very quickly, but we've had some things that you know freaked out our candidates and freaked us out too, because at first it was. My God, the network's down. The, the test has stopped. Is it going to restart where they left off? And it always has. So we've, we've been very pleased with that. And I would say be proud of your center. Preach about it every chance you get. If you're at a Chamber of Commerce meeting or a Rotary Club meeting or in the schools giving a talk or anywhere, just you know, if you're out at your local Target or your local grocery store, talk it up with people. Let them know that you have a GED testing center and that you are part of the solution in your county. You're part of the group of people that's trying to help give people a leg up and provide them with a greater degree of employability and a greater degree of perhaps you know, monetary success and, and also you know, psychological and emotional success as well. You know, what you're doing is really, really important when you open your center and it makes a really important statement to the people in your community. So that's about all I had and I think I probably took more time than I was supposed to. But there's my contact information, our assistant director here, Jenny Link. You can also contact at any given time. We're happy to help you and happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Mark. Um, and I don't see any questions in the chat right now. Um, so I will go ahead and switch over to Ashley's slide. And good morning, Ashley. And we are just about ready for you. OK, thanks. Good morning. Do you want me to go ahead and get started? Uh, yes, your slides should be up for you. So you're good okay. to go. All right, thank you. Um, Mark covered a lot of information, so um, I'll just hit some of the key points that he made. Um, that was really important. So we had to submit a lot of photos. So here's the outside of our building. Um, so let's see if I can. Advance. There we go. Um, we had already had a space that was pretty much set up for this type of environment. It, it's our virtual living room for Veterans Telehealth Center. Um, and I'll show a picture here in a little bit. But it was set up with a computer already in a private room. Um, so we already had the area. So that was pretty easy. Um, and then we also already had the equipment for the technical requirements. Um, but just where we got started, whenever I started here about two years ago, our um, technology uh, services director, I guess is what his title is. Um, he came, whenever I went around, I asked her, I was like, what would you like for our libraries to do in the future? And the first thing he mentioned was becoming a GED testing center. Um, he had had some family that had been wanting to take a test and they had had to drive all the way to Lexington, which is like an hour away from us, because um, we currently didn't have a center here in our area. And so we pulled up the specs of what was required for the equipment in order to do that. And it was a little bit overwhelming. And so I kind of pushed that to the back burner a little bit. Um, and then just a few months later, the SkillsU Center here in our area reached out to me um, and said, hey, is this, a, is this something that you guys could do to become a GED testing center? We've been hearing that libraries are putting this in their, um, 
in their facilities and is this something that you guys can do? So we pulled that all back out and looked at it and when we actually started looking at it, it wasn't as hard as we initially had thought that it would be. Um, all of our computers actually were already up to par with what they were asking. Um, we did have to buy a kit that had like a camera and a um, sign-in um, pad for, for the candidates to use when they came in. Um, and so we got started on it. Um, the installation um, media, media and the guide was difficult to read. Um, for me anyway, I'm not really um, tech savvy, so to speak, on all the, all the lingo. Um, but my IT guy, like if I hadn't had him, it would have been very, very difficult to do. But he, he got right in on it and got it put on the computers, and it was fairly easy for him to do it. So anyone with a background in computers and tech could, could, could do this. Um, it wasn't too difficult. Um, and looking back now, um, it wasn't uh, really difficult, but it wasn't easy, you know, easy peasy. Um, it took some time and it took some effort, um, but after we got it going, um, it was totally worth it. And then after you get your site set up and you get your tech set up, then you certify. Um, I certified myself and then I, I certified we have four full-time members um, that work here and I certified all four of them so that um, you know, if someone gets sick or someone calls in, you always have someone here that can do those tests. Because just like Mark said, the last thing you want to do is cancel these tests. Um, and if you don't do it ahead of time, then they can't get notified in time and you'll have someone here who's wanting to take a test and no one here to give it to them. So make sure you have as many people as possible that can give this test. Um, and the certification test is not hard. Um, they send you the information that you read and then you can take the test and you can take the test as many times as you want until you pass it. Um, so that's really important. So here's our center. Um, we only have one station, workstation, um, and I think Mark mentioned this too, to start small just so you don't get overwhelmed. Um, we opened in June of 2019 and um, we were, we're open on Mondays and it's from 8.30 to 5. We close at 6 so that gives time if someone's you know comes in late that they have a little extra time to make sure they get their tests done. Um, so we have one workstation um, and, and then you can see the waiting area so they want to make sure that you have an area for them to wait and then you have your admitting area. Um, Mark mentioned that it had to be a white background. Whenever we submitted ours, they just wanted it to be solid. And the camera's really picky about taking taking these photos. So if it's not a solid background, then your photo won't be accepted. Um, so we just use one of those um, those office separators, and we just pull it out every Monday to have it used. And then we have a place for them to sit so that it's in the exact spot where the camera needs them to be so that the um, picture captures. Um, what it's supposed to capture. And then you can see the little sign-in um, thing here in front of the computer. Um, so you do have to consider your staffing um, and make sure that you have a de dedicated staff member to focus only on the GED testing. We opened in June on Mondays and we only had one Monday um, until we closed in March this year for the pandemic um, that didn't have a full day scheduled. So we're hoping to open up on a Saturday or maybe even another day through the week whenever we get back open um, because it clearly was uh, needed in our community um, even more than just the Monday we have it open. Um, and so in the room we, we put a sign up that there's testing in progress and Mark mentioned this too, it's really important that your candidates feel comfortable. Um, there are so many candidates that come in and they say, we love taking our test here because you can split your test up and you can take it all in one day or you'll have them come in multiple days just to do sections of the test. And, and they always comment on how friendly and how easy how easy going that um, our center is. It makes them feel comfortable because the last thing they want to be is nervous when they're taking these tests because there's a lot of pressure on them. Um, to get their GED so that they can go and find job and employment. And we always try to mention um, that we're here to help them if they want to apply for jobs and stuff like that. They can use our computers even after um, 
the testing is over, that they can use our computers to get on and search for jobs and that we're here to help them. Um, we also, um, they like for you to have a way to video surveillance. So we did um, install a video camera into our security system so that we have that video surveillance that's being recorded in case that you need to look back. Um, whenever you submit your photos, they're very picky. Um, if you look at our testing center, there is a window behind it. The first time we sent photos, the blinds were open. And they said, send us a photo back with the blinds closed. The blinds need to be closed so that there's no distractions in the window um, for your testing center. Um, I didn't put this photo on here, but um, you don't necessarily have to have a locker that locks. You just have to have some type of cabinet where the candidates can leave their items that lock. So we sent a picture of um, our locked cabinet that's behind our um, check-in desk, um, but we had to send a photo back again because we didn't put the key in the lock. They wanted to see that there was a key that actually went to the lock. So they're a little bit picky about the photos, but once you get your photos in um, and it meets their, their um, qualifications, then, then they approve prove your site and you're ready to go on with the process. Okay, so our community feedback. Um, everybody was so excited whenever we got this going. Um, this is just a little statement from our local skills U. Um, they were able to increase their GED numbers, which had been going down because um, they, the candidates that they serviced didn't always have a car, didn't always have a transportation um, to a GED center that was located an hour away. So we were, we were glad to get this up and going. Um, so. Um, and a lot of, like I said, they just like to have a nice place, a comfortable place where they can take these GEDs. And I think that the public library is already comfortable. People look at the library as a safe place. So it, it just kind of goes hand in hand. It's just perfect for this type of program um, here. And mine's short and sweet. So if you have any questions about anything that Mark or, or me talked about, I don't care to answer them. Um, but that's pretty much pretty much all that I have um, with how we got started. Thank you, Ashley, and You're thank welcome. you, Mark. Um, really great information, and I appreciate all the pictures too. Um, and so next, we'll kick it over to Natalie Cummins, the GED test administrator, and I'm bringing up your slides right now. All righty, thank you. So um, I want to I want to say thank you again for having me here. And gosh, I don't really know what I can add <laughs> to what um, Mark and Ashley said uh, because they gave such wonderful information about their testing centers and the benefits of a testing center in your library. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of the I, I guess a little bit more of the nuts and bolts and background of this. Um, I am the GED administrator for the state of Kentucky. Uh, that means that I, I don't go out and do tests, but I am the person who monitors that we are staying in compliance as a state with our um, uh, GED specific state regulations as well as policies that are uh, put into effect by Kentucky Skills U. Uh, formerly known as Kentucky Adult Education. Uh, we are the Office of Adult Education now inside the Education and Workforce Development Cabinet. Um, so just a, there's a couple of things that you might know, you might not. Uh, here they are if you don't know this. But the GED test has been computer-based since 2014. Um, and online versions uh, actually just became available last month. And that's a very important distinction because the GED test is com in a test center is computer-based. In other words, the test is downloaded to the student's uh, testing computer, and they take the test, and they are, dis they are disconnected from the Internet during that process of testing. And then once they're done, the test goes back to, um, to the big database in the sky for scoring. Now, an online version that's administrated also through Pearson, through their on-view system, uh, 
was pushed through thanks to the pandemic and the closures and everything so that nationally now, uh, I think every state has come on board, every state that offers the GED has come on board with online testing. Um, so in the state of Kentucky, for example, I just checked this morning, but we've had, um, we've had about 60 people who've actually taken the test, uh, taken a section of the test online so far, and uh, 31 people have completed their GED credential thanks to online testing. So it's a, just another, it's just another way for uh, our students to access the GED because as you know, Mark said it is very important to get this GED for jobs and for education. There are four sections. Uh, there's uh, reasoning through language arts, which is combined reading and writing, and then the science, social studies, and math. And Ashley mentioned that some people like to come in and take uh, the whole exam in one day, which it does happen occasionally, but it is definitely much more common for folks to schedule one section at a time. And the sections vary from, you know, a little over an hour to almost two hours in time. Uh, so it's really good, especially given the nervousness factor um, and just the intellectual, <laughs> you know, you're trying to, you're, you're doing a whole lot of thinking on these tests to just schedule one section at a time. And that's what our learning centers really encourage. Uh, it is about seven and a half hours for the whole exam, so that is a lot. Uh, and in Kentucky, we do require passing a practice test, which is called the GED Ready, before you can go on and take the real exam. That test is delivered online and has been since 2014. In the, in the before times, before COVID-19, I do know that a lot of um, GED candidates would take the ready test at uh, library computer centers um, because they might not have had the access at home. Sometimes they take the ready test at learning centers, but I do know that our students often take advantage uh, of the computer centers that are usually available at our public libraries. I'm not sure what your all's policies are about that right now, but just something to keep in mind. And if a student goes through um, a learning center, a skills U learning center, then they get voucher codes that they can take that ready test for free. So that's a, that's a good deal. It's normally $24 for all four sections, $6 a section, so they get to take it free with a learning center. So again, that's another, another good reason to um, develop a good relationship with your local skills U center because you might have folks coming into your library who want, who need to access the GED and you can then direct them to the local learning center for the free ready test, but also for the free instruction that they get at a learning center, which is very high quality. Um, right now, we have about 50 fixed GED testing centers across Kentucky. And those are the, um, the public facing centers. There are other testing centers that are located in state prisons, as well as a number of local county detention centers have some kind of GED testing option. Um, I, our Skills U program, almost all of them that have jails in their counties deliver some kind of instruction in the jail. Of course, with COVID, that all got upended, but I know of several programs that have been very creative in uh, doing Zoom educational sessions. So there is still uh, work that's being done to keep those populations engaged. Some of our SkillsU programs also have mobile testing labs, and these are um, scheduled independently of the normal scheduling process. But those are good because they do go where the, where the testing is really needed. So that's, um, that's a nice option for our SkillsU program. Just to reiterate, um, I think what's already been said before a couple of times is we, we don't have enough of a presence at GED testing centers around the state. 
There are several geographic pockets in Kentucky. I, I'm sorry, I did not include a map. I don't. I'm still working on a, a, a new and an updated map of our testing footprint. But uh, for example, Western Kentucky is severely lacking. Um, South Central Kentucky doesn't have that much access. There's a lot around Somerset, um, and then Eastern Kentucky has pockets where there uh, there's no testing available. But then there are also densely populated areas of the state that don't have adequate testing access. Uh, Louisville, I was working on Louisville Public Library before the pandemic hit to try to get more testing access there, as well as the Kenton County Public Library up in Covington, the main branch. I was trying to get some um, testing up there. And they were, uh, actually Covington was in the process of applying when COVID hit, and so we're kind of on hold there. But uh, Lexington is, a, is a, actually another densely populated area that could use more testing. And I'm not going to go through this because uh, Mark, honestly, I kind of want to frame <laughs> every slide that he did about this um, and, and everything that Ashley said as well. Uh, because there are just so many advantages to becoming a GED testing center. And I, I will add that um, I really do feel that the overall mission of public libraries very closely aligns with the mission of adult education. You know, we are kind of two sides of the same issue. We want to incre increase access to knowledge and opportunities for folks that um, typically don't have access or have not had access in the past. And they need guidance to be pointed in the right direction so that they can improve their lives, um, improve their economic standing, and, uh, you know, and become better members of our society. So I, I always think that any, any kind of partnership that we can do as adult education, that we can do with our public library system is just natural. It just totally makes sense. Um, both of them have mentioned that you go, in order to become a testing center, you do go through um, a process that is managed by Pearson View. Uh, GED testing service owns the content of the GED exam, but Pearson View is the company that handles the distribution of the test itself and the um, licensing and certification of the testing centers. You can definitely get a hold of me if you have questions and need to be directed in the right place, and I will be happy to do that. I don't handle the actual um, approval process. I don't review the photographs or anything like that. All of that is handled through Pearson View. But uh, certainly, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. And then just a couple of slides here to show what you will see. And if you go to the GED site, uh, and there are links here, you should be uh, you be able to download those technical requirements that uh, Ashley alluded to, as well as the facility requirements, uh, so that you can get a better sense of what your library, you know, if your library is in a good spot now to apply, or if you would need to rethink some of your space in order to apply, as well as your technical situation. That's all I have. Uh, and there's my contact information. So uh, email is the best way to get a hold of me right now because um, we are still working remotely. <laughs> but uh, I am on the email all day. And I'm happy to arrange a phone call if you'd like to just talk live. But I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, chat with you all again. So I'm going to stop talking now and turn it back over to Oh, let me see here. Lauren says, how long does it typically take to get approved once libraries start the process? So that question really, it, it, you know, it's funny. That's always like a, people ask us, well, how long does it take to get your GED? Well, it kind of depends on where you start. 
Um, the process can be fairly fast. I think it can take, you know, a matter of just a few weeks. If you are prepared with all of the, um, you've got all your paperwork done, you've got all of those pictures that they want. Uh, because they, uh, like both Ashley and Mark mentioned, Pearson wants to see your testing center from a many, many different angles because they want to make sure that that space conforms with what they feel a testing center should be like. So if you have all of your stuff lined up and ready to go, then it should be fairly fast. But if you have to do a whole lot of back and forth, then you might be looking at you know a couple of months to get uh, approved. I see Lauren is typing, so I'm see if there's another question for me. Ah, so the question here is, do libraries have to manage reservations for testing science time slots using their own software, what they typically use for library events, or is there a service provided by GED? That is an excellent question. And the short answer is, no, you don't manage the testing uh, appointments, but um, because the test taker when a test taker goes to schedule their GED exam, the test taker does it through their own GED account called My GED. And they will be able to see uh, testing centers that are geographically close to them, and they can widen the search if they're willing to travel. And they will see available test times at those testing centers. And then they will select the time, and they will schedule their test through the GED software. However, in order for them to be able to select a test time, every testing center has to be uh, diligent about making sure that their available test times are correct in the um, Pearson uh, reservation software. So every testing center sets their schedule uh, through Pearson because they are a, they're a Pearson Center licensed to do GED. And so they go through Pearson and establish that they will be open, for example, you know, on July 7th from 10 to 5, let's say. And they'll have a number of slots that are available. So on that side of things, yes, the library has to make sure that their schedule is up to date. Uh, or their, their availability is up to date in Pearson, and then the student schedules their own time um, at a testing center. And Ashley has pointed out that you can print out the schedule every mor morning from Pearson View Connect, and she just reiterated that you have to go in and set the open dates and times. So you don't have to, and Mark pointed out that Pearson makes sure that there's no overlap in the test. So you don't have to um, you don't have to worry about that at all. Those are great questions. Yeah, thanks so much, Natalie. Uh, that was great information, and um, also to Mark and Ashley, uh, really great information. And um, feel free to type more questions into the chat box. Um, and I'm just really glad that you guys have joined us today for this webinar. And uh, we have some slides that we'll go through now. And so we want to remind you that KDLA has several listservs that are open to public library staff uh, for bookmobile, children's, adult, technology staff. So if you're not already on one or more of those listservs, feel free to sign up. Um, and we have a listservs page which direct, with uh, directions on how to do that. Um, this webinar will be recorded and available in about a week. And this is the, where it will be on our uh, archived webinars page. It will be under the Library Link-Up series. We would also like to thank the Institute for Museum and Library Services for partially sponsoring this webinar today. 
And we would, again, like to thank you for attending. And we would also like to ask you to fill out our survey linked right here um, for this training. This helps us with our federal funding. Also, your certificate of attendance will be emailed within one week. And let me see if there's any questions that came in. OK. Um, we have, okay, so now in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the downloads where you can download the slides. And um, I believe that's all. So I see um, we're still chatting a little bit, but thank you again for attending. And um, thanks to our presenters for sharing such great info. So we'll leave it open so you guys can continue to chat and see if there's any more questions coming through. And yes, hopefully Ohio County can get set up. Because as Natalie said, they're looking for more uh, testing centers on that part of the state. Yes, no pressure. But thank you all, and we'll go ahead and close out.